This is Basket Case Clubs, CPR Group's podcast where we turn basket case clubs into showcase clubs. G'day everyone and welcome back to Basket Case Clubs. My name is Michael Connolly and it is again my privilege and pleasure to take you on this journey of basket casey goodness. Joining me is the ever wonderful Steve Connolly. <laughs> Hello, Steve. <laughs> I sit like this on the edge of my seat, just waiting to see how I'm going to be introduced. And yes, I am ever wonderful. Uh, you know, what? I'm, I'm wonderful. Gonna, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask your wife and kids if you're ever wonderful, or if sometimes you wake up and need a cup of coffee before you're wonderful no i'm sometimes not wonderful okay so the ever wonderful after coffee steve mostly (laughs) mostly mostly wonderful wonderful. yes (laughs) thanks for having me i'm excited uh once again to sit and talk practically which we did do last time a little bit at least we started practical what our listeners don't know is just before we started recording steve said right let's get practical so we've spent the last couple of weeks talking about how to make more money. And believe it or not, the basket case pros are going down some rabbit warrens. And there was a little bit of soul searching last episode that I must admit has made me feel good about myself. We do what we do because we're driven by purpose. And the purpose, now this is, please don't take this as a plug. We, at CPR Group, what we do is help clubs, particularly in our clubs team, is help clubs better understand the business of sport. That wasn't me. If you can hear those jingle jangle bells in the background, that done. that is the cute pooches who are here for a snuggle. Yes. The basket case pooches. Basket case pooches, crikey. And that you're just going to see this little dog tail wander through. Gee, this is funny because he wandered through last episode too. He did. <laughs> so Jess, you're not allowed to cut them out, by the way. All right. He's so joining me as out. usual is Steve and Archie and Lulu. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So I don't mean, as the dog now joins us, I don't mean this to sound like a plug, but what we do at CPR Group is try and help clubs better understand the business of sport and that not-for-profit doesn't mean no-profit and you should be able to generate good income because it's that income that will help you deliver on your purpose. And there's a lot of money on the table. There is a lot of money and there's a lot of money left on the table too. Yep. So what I, the, a big part of the purpose and why I feel good about our discussion last time is that I'm uh, uh, sorry, I believe that we are both connected enough with why we do what we do. It's, it's not about the fact that we're going to write a kick-ass constitution. It's not about the fact that we're going to help some poor committee members who are really struggling to better manage their time between their work life, their home life, their social life, and their volunteer life, and have never haven't played sport in the last ten years because they've been too busy off the field. All of those are, are benefits, but it's because sport is such a vehicle for bringing people together in Australia. And a big part of that is that we can, as we talked about, bring people from regional and remote communities. If we do a good job as sport and our clubs are doing a good job, they can help fund these sorts of programs. So, look, it, it's a, it's a, as you know, we've talked about this for 25 years. It's a big driver behind what we do. And so, all of the, the, the uh, what a kick ass strategic plan that you've just done. Like, it looks schmick and it actually drives connection to that. Th- those members are connected to that club. You know who I'm talking about. Mm. They're connected to that club because they can see themselves in our plan, their plan. That's all really rewarding, but it's nowhere near as rewarding as what can happen if we change mindsets of people over generations of committees to believe in the power of sport like we believe in the power of sport. So in getting practical today, we're now going to say, explain to you some ways that you can make more money through sport. So the first, so obviously the first one was collect all your fees. That's That's where we got stuck in our last episode. We got stuck there for our whole episode. So that's core business. But now how can we expand on that with other business units? And the first one I want to go to is food, Mm. selling food. And we've said for many years that the only marketing that many clubs do of the food that they sell to the people who are very much a captive market because they are there at their premises trapped for an entire match length 
or the day for a carnival. And in the majority of cases, we don't just... Two days for cricket. <laughs> Two days for cricket. We don't just have a fast food joint across the road. In many cases, we've got this captive market that are genuinely ours, yet all we do to market the food that we can sell to them is to open the roller door and maybe put a couple of lolly boxes out on the counter. Because you said that when we talked about it in our marketing mini-series. Yep. You talked about the lolly boxes. And it's probably because I'm a bit of a lolly fan. Some lolly, Steve. A lolly yeah. fan. It's just a well, lolly's next episode. I have two weaknesses. You know, not the wine that's sitting in front of me, but the <laughs> reality is my weaknesses are lollies and donuts. Put them together hang and on, I on, am in real on, trouble. Hang on, Lamington fingers. Oh, yeah, you're right. There are more than two. <laughs> I've already pointed to a fourth. Here. <laughs> Maltesers. I have weaknesses, right? No, yeah. not Maltesers. They're oh, they're mine. Yeah, they're yeah, yours. I was just wondering because I also like Lamington fingers. <laughs> I like Lamington fingers. You like Lamington fingers. I knew I wasn't alone. Mm. So this is, for me a huge missed opportunity in many clubs cases. Yep. And and this apply, you know, we were talking about golf last week and the same is true. Why is it not really easy for me to just get a quick bite to eat after the night? Why, why do I have to, why is it a pain in my backside to do so? Mm. Make it eat. And you know, clubs that resist the idea of having a roaming food or drink cart across their golf course, make it easy for people to spend money with your business, take the service to them. And we've talked for years about the idea which some of our clients have implemented, which is get some young helpers walking around the courts or playing fields with an esky and a bum bag or now a little square card reader, take the food and drinks to the people and make it really easy for them to purchase from you. Yeah. It's not only about the money. Like you said, make it easy for people to give you money. This is also about value adding to their experience. If they service. have a good experience, the fact that they've, slipped you a few extra bucks is actually a, a, a byproduct yep. that they don't remember. What yep. they remember is the great experience that they've had. And set yourself apart. Imagine the club that does that compared with every other freaking club in their competition yep. that doesn't do that. So, oh, well, ABC Sports Club will bring food to us on yeah, the sideline. Yeah. Or even hot chocolate and coffee. Yep. So on a cold winter's morning and an yep. eight o'clock match at a netball carnival where everyone's rugged up with scarves and beanies, the club that, that is going to win is the one that says, hey, we're taking orders for hot drinks. Would you yep. like something? Yes, please. Like, yep. take my money. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Jess said to me one time, Steve, hey, Dad, do you get a kickback from Square? <laughs> we should. We should. Bloody well should. We and should. Zero, I sell a lot of zero. Yeah, funny that. Anyway, <laughs> no, no, we don't is the answer. Yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we did talk about this when we were talking about marketing. Yep. But I so I don't want to go through everything when we yep. when the, when we were talking about the canteen there. But the the model of the canteen is a good starting point. Mm. So is the model the old traditional model that's run by reluctant volunteers who just happen to be and you know they say what do you want and they're like there's your food give me your money what do you want like. They're reluctant because they're forced into the canteen on a roster system. Now, okay, if, if you're going to persist with the volunteer model, fine, but it doesn't have to be a volunteer-only model. It yeah. can change. And it, it's best if it changes because you're making a decision. You, you're not letting the, the cart wag the dog, <laughs> tail wag the horse. You know what I'm saying? It's about deliberate decisions to say, this is what we want to be. So are we going to outsource the can canteen? Are we not going to have a canteen? And we're actually going to focus on service delivery. So improving the level of service and just saying every Friday night, we're going to have four food trucks. Yep. We're going to have the pizza place, the Mexican, oh, yum. Yep. The Brazilian food and the, the, the Greek Hamburgers. things. No, the, loaded, the Greek I'm, things. Oh, I'm obviously hungry. <laughs> We call loaded fries in French poutine. 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 Like, why don't they just call them loaded fries? <laughs> like, poutine. Because it sounds like the, the president of Russia a little bit. Sounds, yeah. it's and it also sounds it like up a, a little tin bit. that you do poo in. Like, yeah. like, why don't you just call them loaded fries? Because loaded fries, anyway. It's a shit house name. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or are you going to do a profit share arrangement? So that's the other one yep. that we talked about. Now, yep. the, to reiterate, the most important thing, if you're going to do a profit sharing arrangement with 
you're basically outsourcing it, but you're saying, you run it. If you want to make a million dollars a year, make a million dollars a year. It's just, you'll also be paying us a million dollars a year. What, what I very unfortunately have seen happen is people get greedy and they go yeah. back on that and they say, well, they, they're they making a million dollars a year. If we went and ran it ourselves, we'd make $2 million a year. Don't get greedy. Yep. In, if this is the incentive. It works because of the incentive. Yep. So your point about the captive market is critical. These mm. are people who are there. So then as far as mixing up our offering goes, you don't have to stick with the same menu for a whole year. It's hot in summer sell lots of frozies. It's cold in winter, sell lots of lasagna and soup and minestrone and now I'm hungry. And hot chocolate. Yep. And hot chocolate and, and coffee. Yep. So warm things. So now I want to talk about promotion. A, a lot of clubs, and you can do this for your own club, but I want you to do it for your clubs as well. Go and have a look at some of their Facebook pages. They're doing a really good job with things like player profiles where they'll have, you know, like it comes up like it's the state of origin, you know, the, the record and you know goals for against whatever really cool stuff and it, it's it's actually that stuff on and we talked about this in marketing so we don't need to go through it again but it's that stuff that generates an emotional connection so it's that stuff that's really really good and value if you think about a mum or dad yeah. seeing their kid in a high production yep. value photo with all the stats against their name like, yeah, a, standing like there, a, you know um little player card you know, yeah what were they um Trading card. Trading card, thank yeah, you. And they used to come with bubble gum. It was always <laughs> awful. Yeah, yeah, but the card was good. Again, parents again, that's going to separate that club from every other club in that yeah. league. So, yep. And all those that don't do it. All those that really don't do it get left up. behind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But how many are actually doing a good job with their canteen? Because you can actually use marketing for all of your business units. So that's where we, we did talk about this when we talked marketing. But this is really important to talk about when we want to actually make money. If you've got good food, then let people know you've got good food because it's part of the experience that they're buying. What you want to do is, and this is one of those secrets that I said I'd be giving away. It's like magic. Like if you, there's, there's value that clubs aren't letting people know about. They're already giving tremendous value that they're not shining a big spotlight on it saying, hey, look at this part. So they're saying, you know, we talked about how much a season of sport costs. And if it's 300 bucks, if you then decide, because you, when we get to the end and we say pricing is a really important part of this, you, that you want to put your fees up, you should always have some increase in perception of value that you're offering at the same time as you're increasing the fees. Mm -hmm. You might have been doing this, but so I'll take this for me because I I haven't been doing it well enough. I haven't been letting our clubs know that there's plenty of value that they are providing that they're not shining a spotlight on. So while we've been doing the whole thing about the level of service and it's important to to be priced accordingly, any price increase ideally should be linked with an increase in the perception of value that you're offering to the customer. That value typically already exists. Now, the reason that we're doing that is either to close the deal. So if somebody's umming and ahhing about what they're going to get if they front up with this 300 bucks, because you know it's going to break the bank for a season of football, then you can, add, you can add value to say, oh, but did you know it also includes this? So if you're giving away socks for free, don't give the socks away for free. Include the socks as a value add. So yes, you pay this, but we're also going to give you free this. So shine a spotlight on it. And if people just say, yeah, take my money, then great, that's that's good. But then if it's not $300, but it's like your golf club example and it's thousands of dollars, then when they get home, their onboarding process, which could be a series of emails that they receive over the next four weeks, reminds them of the fact that they've made a really clever purchasing decision. You are such a clever person. You've made a really clever decision in joining our club and then you remind them of why that's clever. And it's always something new. So did you know, as part of your membership, you get this many dollars worth of range balls included in your price? Or you can say, for, for, no, I wouldn't say for free because you're shining a spotlight on it. In, yep. As a value add, yep. you also get $100 worth of range ball tokens. And they're, they're often just including that. You or Did you know that? And a lot of people aren't necessarily going to take it up. So you, you, you're giving away nothing, but you're gaining the value of the perception that you're giving something yeah. away. So I'm talking specifically about sport here, but yep. imagine, I'll take you to a buying experience I had when I bought one of my 
red V8 Holdens. I say one of <laughs> crikey, I'm a bogan. I do wear it on my sleeve though. No, along with your wet blues, yeah. bogan on this sleeve. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, they weren't all V8s. My red Holdens weren't all V8s. Anyway, with one of them, it was a club sport, by the way. I didn't know that this was going to happen, but they sent me this back. You got one. You got one of the leather compendiums with club sport yeah, embossed yeah, on they it. They sent you double, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. How cool was that? Especially for me, because I didn't have to drive around in the Bogan Commodore. <laughs> and I tell you what, because of that, if they still bloody made them, I would have bought another one. By, I would have bought yep. another several by now. God, yep. it was a good car. But you're oh, right. It's, rest and, in peace. Oh, that's man. the rusted on raving fan win that clubs aren't striving for in the way that yep. exactly. for-profit yeah. businesses are. Yeah. And they can because they've yep. got all of that value. They're just giving and it away without shining, a, yeah, yeah. without shining a spotlight on it. So the expensive golf club example is easy because it's low-hanging fruit. You get your $300 yep. of bar credit. You get your range balls. You get your how however many days per week that you can come and play on the course without having to pay any green fees. You get cart hire for so many times a year. Whatever it is, you get to bring a guest. For, uh, you get to bring a guest, despite the fact the guest still has to pay, they get access to a course that they wouldn't, other, wouldn't have otherwise had access to. Most clubs have these things that they're just bundling in and not shining a spotlight on it. So that's a fantastic way to, to generate more value in what you're doing. So with an increase in, pri increase in price should come an increase in the perception of value. So back to the canteen, because that's where this whole thing started. Remember that you don't just, as Steve had said, you don't just have to unlock the door, roll up the shutters and push the lollies to the yep. front. You can go and make increased sales by actually taking the food to where the people are. There are so many opportunities. I wonder if part of the reason that volunteer committees and the canteen coordinators that run these canteens that we're talking about don't go and proactively sell their products is because there's almost a, a feeling that they shouldn't be making too much money. We, we, I reckon you're right in some cases, at least. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't be detracting from that privately owned fast food joint down the road. Yeah, bullshit. You shouldn't. You, because where's your money going? Absolutely. And the real purpose. See last episode. Yep. Like, yes. But where I was going with the whole promo thing and the... Yep. Player profiles is you can do exactly the same thing with your canteen offerings, okay. it, it, like we said. Showcase your meal deal. Showcase your meal. But who invented the the mixed mega burger? Oh, I would love to invent a Ruben. <laughs> do you like Rubens? McDonald's. McDonald's. Oh, <laughs> terrible. Do you like Rubens? Yes, I do like yeah, a Ruben sandwich. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I would wish love my to name invent. was Ruben. <laughs> yeah. But I'd have a Ruben, but I would include pickled jalapenos as well as the pickles. Okay. How good that would that be? Yeah. Well, it would be I a agree. certain market. I would like it. I would buy one. I would buy one. But then have a photo of the person who invented the sandwich there. Yep. Okay. If, if it's um, Mama's secret recipe lasagna, who's Mama? Yeah. Like, actually have Mama say, this is my secret recipe. It's We don't say homemade anymore because of food preparation <laughs> legislation and licensing with councils, which is all good because... If I'm eating at the club, I do not want salmonella poisoning. Yeah. The food's expensive, but the salmonella's free. That's not value adding. <laughs> but the, 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 there are clubs that do a really good job of separating themselves from the pack by having the thing, you know, oh, they do they do home cooked meals. They do house cooked. House cooked meals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Traditional I'm, recipe. Tradition rustic. Yeah, yeah that's it's it. Rustic. Um, yeah. Not rusty. Not rusty. So there are there are clubs with which we've worked there are teams for which and against which i've played when i played sport myself that were known for the food that they would put on for the players after a game yep or that and, was available for and purchase. their hangers on yep so the significant others who yep. turn up for a senior game of football and even if actually get a decent feed yep yep that's it so mum who doesn't have to cook doesn't that have night, to cook that night. And remember yep. and I, I do not mean this to sound sexist but if you get into the hearts and minds of the mums, then they are the ones who often drive purchasing decisions. Yep. So mums make decisions to get kids into football, sometimes also called soccer. Yes. Because it's a non-contact sport. Yep. 
Now, you can see some of the injuries on my body that came from playing a non-contact <laughs> yeah. sport. I know you played football and I've certainly seen it be yep. not non-contact for you. Yep. But mum's made those decisions. Yes. And if the food is good and good enough to mean that that can be where we eat tonight, then that's a win. It's a win for mum. Yeah. It's a win for the family, but it's a win for the club as well. And, and that's really important. And there are some clubs that do that so successfully that mums with kids, families with kids, who aren't even playing that sport at all or have no other connection with that sport. Guilty. Will go yeah. to eat that food on yeah. that night. Yep. And watch I, a game if if the interest takes them at the moment, but they'll probably just there be the there for the food. Yeah. 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 The game might keep them there for a second purchase. They might yep. go back for second. Yep. I have been known to travel across Greater Brisbane to get a fake burger. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Steve, I'm very sorry to say we're going to have to pull up stumps again. Are you the, surprised? That gives me an excuse to come back next time. <laughs> I hope you'll have me back. Yeah. <laughs> we might end up being in the same clothes again. Yes, next time. probably will. So this has been a fascinating journey because we don't seem to be getting very far through. And what's happening, uh, again, I'll take the bullet for this one. I'm getting excited about this stuff. The reason yep. I get excited about this stuff is... There are so many opportunities for clubs to make more money than they're making. We've just talked about collecting fees and we've talked about payment plans or eliminating payment plans because then you get your money. Oh, what we didn't talk about was early payment discounts. Yes, just like your rates. And we have touched on this in the past. It's such yeah. a great psychological trick to say, yep, pay us this amount. But if you pay us a little early, you get it cheaper. Now, there's probably people listening who are saying, but I don't want to give them a discount. We need that money. Well, let me let you in on a little secret for what councils do and what electricity suppliers do. The amount that you pay with the... Uh, oh, gee, I hope I don't get kneecapped for this. The mafia's <laughs> going to come out and get me for giving away the joint. The energy but... mafia are coming after you. <laughs> Actually, if there's a mafia that I'd be worried about, it would be the energy That's mafia. That's a good point. Yeah. The amount that you pay when you get your early payment discount is the actual amount. If you pay late, that's like a penalty. So what I'm saying, but it's all or in maybe the promo, not, or not saying, saying, is that it's actually a levy or a tax for paying late. You can do the same thing. That's what that that's the thing that like I said gets me out of bed is there are so yep. many opportunities here yep. that you can do exactly the same thing and then people who do pay late have missed the early payment discount. You're making extra money. It's actually going to cost you a bit extra because you've got to do the administration because they're going to bitch and moan. Yep. But that's that's the secret. So these are the things that I, I really want to share because there's so much in this and this is why it's exciting and this is why we're going to we have been drawn down another tangent. I really hope that we make it to the end next episode. <laughs> but this is also stuff that is applied day in, day out in the real world of business. But it's only because we think so differently in the world of not-for-profit business that it's not applied there as well. And we're being dra the, the square, you know, comment that we touched on earlier. And <laughs> no, while well, we don't get a get get a cut from Square every time we mention them, they've disrupted the market in a fantastic way, in my opinion. And we now operate in an environment where if you don't offer digital payment options, card payment options, you are seen as Born the odd one out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's a fantastic example of where we now have made available to not-for-profit businesses this age-old merchant facility that makes it easy for people to spend money as long as they've got a little piece of plastic credit card that you can't or, or, a, or a watch or their phone yes um soon to be a little chip in our thumb i'm sure and eyeball yeah that you, you you so there's no excuse to not offer that payment option now and i think that we we're going to continue to see more of that expectation change or shift but until we do, the clubs that are leading the way, I don't know where I'm going with this. No, the clubs that are going, the, no, where you're going is that the clubs that are leading the way are going to be the clubs that make all the money. Yes. And the clubs, Thank you. That's exactly what I was going to say. The, the clubs that are being, and I don't mean this derogatorily, but some of the clubs that are being too traditionalist yep. are going to get left behind. Yes. Now, they will be able to play catch up, but it is going to get harder and harder for them to do. So. And some have been left behind. Some have gone 
belly up. Yeah, we don't have them anymore. Yep, yep. So don't become one of those statistics. Recognise mm. that there are solutions out there that are applied in the real world of business and there's absolutely no excuse anymore to not apply them in the world of not-for-profit Absolutely. Great way to finish. I agree. Steve, <laughs> I know that you're you... are welcome. Will... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For your words of wisdom. Steve, I know that you will join me next time yes. because I'm going to lock the door to my studio just there indeed. and you'll be trapped in here and so you'll have to join me next time. Happily. While you ponder joining us next time, which of course I know that you will, in the meantime... Go and check us out on social media. It'll, the links will be in the description here. If you missed the webinar that we held on the 3rd of July, give us a call, send us an email, contact us, and we'll be able to send you a recording of that session because it's a great way to share that with the rest of your committee. I know that you're invested, but it's the rest of your committee invested. So that's a great way that you'll be able to share that with them. And of course, share Basket Case Clubs with them. The last thing I want you to do, because you are a wonderful person, is subscribe to the podcast. Because when you subscribe, then you'll get notified when we release new episodes. And if you know us, there have been some gaps. And some so lulls. Always a surprise. It's like Christmas morning. Waking up and, and being surprised that Santa's brought you a brand new Ferrari. But it's better. It's the Basket Case Bros. Thank you for joining us, Steve. See you next time. Looking forward to seeing you next time. See you next time. time. Ciao. <laughs> Basket Case Clubs acknowledges the traditional custodians of the country on which we record, being Yugambir, Tarrabal, Jagera and Kabi Kabi land. We recognise their enduring connection to land, waters and culture and pay our respect to Elders past, present and emerging, and extend that respect to First Nations listeners.